Hi everyone, so in this lesson we're going to take a look at uh, another key standard of living measurement that you will need to be quite fluent in using through the economics course and that is uh, gross national income or GNI. Uh, this um, is another very useful measurement in addition to gross domestic product that we looked at in our last lesson. If we break this term down, we can see that gross, again, refers to total, as we've seen. Instead of domestic, we're now actually considering what a nation uh, owns in terms of its resources, in terms of its land, labour, capital and enterprise, uh, and how those resources are used to generate income instead of actually just produce products, i.e. output, as we saw GDP. Uh, okay, now the sum of a nation's uh, GDP and the net income it receives from overseas really is, is a good definition for what GNI actually reflects. Uh, and it can be broken down to a very simple calculation, uh, which is GNI equals the GDP, GDP sorry, plus the uh, net factor income. Now, this can be negative, of course, so you might have more money leaving your domestic economy uh, rather than is actually coming home. Uh, it depends on the economy's makeup and what is actually taking place uh, within the economy. So um, because we're looking at gross domestic product here, again, we're going to see many of the same strengths as well as the limitations of um, GDP as a measurement. But the useful element with this GNI is that it does consider how a nation's resources overseas will help to generate income. Okay, however, the gross national income will be lower when foreign investors control a high proportion of a country's income. Uh, so if we take Ireland as a good example here, Ireland is renowned for having a very low corporation tax rate. Now, because of that, they have attracted a lot of inward FDI from multinational corporations investing in Ireland. And they have their European headquarters in Ireland. And of course, Ireland is within the European Union. So this provides a number of trade, trade advantages for those multinationals. But it also means that while um, Ireland's economy swells as a result of their presence and the money that they're generating uh, within the EU and within Ireland, uh, what is also likely to take place is that profits are likely to be repatriated back to the US, back to Japan, back to uh, the headquarters or, or the home country for these uh, multinational corporations. And because of that, what we can see is that Ireland's GDP in 2016 is 275 billion euros, uh, but its gross national income was a lot lower at 227 billion euros. And that really is because uh, they have more money leaving their economy uh, as a result of this inward FDI that has taken place here. Okay, so it means that the gross national income is actually lower than the GDP. Okay, if we just contrast this with an example such as uh, Tajikistan, which is famed almost for having the largest uh, uh, um, the largest number of uh, remittances, uh, that is workers who, um, as a proportion that is, uh, wor workers who work in overseas markets, so Tajikistani workers who are working in overseas markets, they will then send their money back home to the Tajikistani economy, economy uh, to family members and so on. And because of that, it means that we can see the GDP figure in 2016, 6.9 billion, while the actual gross national income, because the net factor income was positive as opposed to negative, is $8.6 billion. So you can see the actual remittances of having their resources, their labor overseas, is actually bringing more income in uh, to the economy and wouldn't be reflected when you just actually look at the GDP figures of what is taking place within the economy. Okay, I hope that's a useful overview of the uh, GNI calculation.